Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. This one is a bit different, it's still 15mm, it's still figures by Battlefront but it's Team Yankee for a change and not Flames of War. This guide is about the VDV Airborne Infantry. I have another couple of Soviet guides coming up too in the same vein so if you want to catch them like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff but in the meantime let's go over to see how we got these guys painted and camoed. I'm going to be painting this in the same kind of style that I normally use, a style you'll be familiar with if you follow the channel and that's layering, starting with an undercoat of German Camo Black Brown. Now that undercoat as you see it just now is looking a little bit shiny folks. The reason for that is I painted this mini at a run so to speak, I just put the colours down and kept going normally. I'm painting them in batches and each coat of paint is dry before I apply the other coat but you can see here you can just crack on with this layering approach too if you're in a bit of a hurry. I was in a bit of a hurry because I screwed up the original recording folks. It was all out of focus on many of the shots. This one though is looking good so we can hopefully get some nice clear images and you can follow what I'm doing. So you can see what I'm starting with is by building up the sort of block shapes, it's almost like painting in lines and painting in blocks of the main colour. Now you can find all the colours in the description folks. This here is medium olive. Now medium olive looks very bright especially at this stage in the process against the dark background where the paint is wet but it will dry to a less bright and more flat finish and also it'll, it'll appear less bright once we've got all the colours on. So at this stage I'm blocking in the figure, creating the main shape and by that I mean finding all the, the raised areas of the tunic, you know the folds, elbows, collars, cuffs, all these kind of things and leaving a little bit of the shade colour. Now we're going to be fine tuning that in the next stage. The important here is just getting the basic shape so we can finalise the look when we put on another coat of medium olive. When we're applying our coats, we're using a very small brush you know, on a very small area. We want to be making sure that the paint is going on thin enough. We don't want to put a thick bit of paint on and that's quite an easy mistake to make on a small area. Now it's very important that the second coat also is nice and smooth. In fact, a little bit wetter than the first coat if possible without having it drain onto the, the dark areas for a nice smooth finish overall. And this is a point where we can fine tune the shade so that it doesn't become too dominant. Now the camo on this VDV figure is very easy to do. I am using deck tan and a brush which is in quite good condition. It's got a bit of a point to it but it's a little bit ragged so that I can just very carefully apply little blotches with a ragged brush which has got little bits of tails of hair sticking out which helps create the randomness of the shapes that we need. And I'm applying it in such a way where I'm going to try not to overpaint any shade. You know, if you need to, you can paint a little bit of the camel colour on one bit, leave a bit of shade, paint it on the other bit. That's as much as we need to do at this scale. And then just make sure it's in the right kind of balance. It's not too much. It's certainly not too little. And also that it makes sense when you follow the figure around. You're not going to have one area which is slightly out of sight as you're painting it, having no camo on it. Move the figure around as you're working. Now for the boots and the gun, I've already given them an undercoat of black. I'm not using the German camo black brown here, that's the wrong colour. I want black boots and a black shade area on the gun. And then for the boots, I'm giving them a highlight of German grey and that's it. The gun is going to get the same highlight but I'm going to then add an additional highlight to it for a metallic glint. Now the highlight on the metallics is going to be London grey. Any similar grey will do, but just make sure it's a very, very fine brush and you're only applying a little bit just to catch the eye and give the gun some shape. The belt, water bottle, scabbard and also the strap that's holding on the, I think it's a rocket launcher on the back there folks, an anti-armour weapon. I am using 
a sort of medium kind of brown colour here. Anything of that range will do fine. Sort of leathery kind of brown. I am using German Camo Medium Brown and I'm just putting a nice little line on all these areas, leaving a little bit of that shade colour, remember, to help give us a bit of a shape on the edge. And don't forget the grip on the barrel on the AK-47 folks will follow the same process and use the same colour. Now to help that pop, we're going to use a highlight of new wood. Just once again, very very small amount, just to help it catch the eye. So we've got shade, tiny bit of shade folks, the Gemma Camel Black Brown, then the medium brown and then the new wood. I'm using green grey for the satchels, leaving shade around it as we did with the belts and such like so it's got a nice clear shape against the figure and also shade internally as I would say so you can see the shape of the satchels themselves. And then I'm going to be highlighting with splinter camo base, just little lines around the outside and around the internal shading lines that we left in there. I'm going to use those colours again on the strap because the strap's going to be some kind of fabric and you might as well use the same colours to save us all a bit of time but you can change it up if you want and use a different kind of colour in there folks it's really your call Equipment such as the rocket launcher, mortars, radios and painting camo olive green as the main colour I'm being careful to leave the shade colour in there to help define the shape because we're then going to go on with a highlight of green grey just to help make that shape pop just by putting little spots and lines of brightness around and on the features so we can clearly see what the figure is carrying. Now we're on to the skin and I'm using Saddle Brown and you'll note I'm leaving no internal shade here folks by that I mean there's a shade between the hand and the cuff, the head and the hat and the neck, but there's no shade in the eyes, there's no shade in the fingers, between the fingers and such legs. I'm also going to add a little blob of brown, any old brown will do folks here, for the hair, just so that there's a bit of colour back there behind the berry. The main colour for the skin is going to be sunny skin tone, anything similar will do folks. The saddle brown is a nice warm shade colour here, so any kind of bright skin colour will work a treat. Thin brush again and just start following the lines, follow the lines of the face, you've got brows, nose, cheeks, lips, you've got fingers, create the shapes that your own eye is going to recognise and everyone else's eye will help them clearly see these small areas and bring them into focus and help bring the figure to life. Now the very bright berry that they're wearing, I'm using ultramarine blue here. It's going to take two coats folks to get this on. I'm doing this at a run so I'm going to give it one coat and then I'm going to paint on a little blob of black to help make the badge pop. And then I'm going to go back and give it another coat of the blue. Remember to put this on nice and smooth folks, the second coat especially. And then I'm going to give it a highlight of azul, which is basically a, a very light blue. Very small lines once again folks, and that will just help define the shape and once again make it pop. Before I move on to some tan yellow, a little blob of tan yellow followed by an even smaller blob of red. And that's us done folks. Hopefully you found that useful, found it interesting and gave you a few ideas how you can tackle these infantry and perhaps other camouflaged infantry at this scale. I'm going to finish off the video with a few stills here now folks so you can see the completed figures, what they look like when they're based and put together in units. If you found this useful, check out our Painting Flames of War playlist. There are so many tutorials on there for tanks, vehicles, planes, the lot. And if you like what you saw and you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button folks. And if you hit the bell button, that means we'll definitely see you all on the next one.